You've tuned in to Life With Purpose. Today is August 14th and it is 10.47 a.m. here in Ghana. As you all know, I was led to move here to Ghana. And when I tell y'all, I literally left everything that I owned in New York to move by faith because I know that the father was calling me to do something bigger than myself. And although I didn't understand it and I was very fearful, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and lie and act like I had all my eggs in the basket and I had things figured out because I did not. Like I was terrified. But you know what? It was something about in that moment of being terrified that I trusted the will of the father's. I trusted the will of the father more for my life than I considered the fact of fear. I trusted the will of the father more than acknowledging that fear that I was facing in that moment. But when I tell y'all I left everything, everything, every single thing. So when I say everything, I mean everything. I sold my car before I left to, to move here. I gave away all of the contents of my house. I left behind friends and family, basically my whole identity because my life in the States, it wasn't just New York, it was Texas also because you guys all know that I lived there for a period of time for about seven years before I moved back to my original hometown, which was in New York. And so I literally left my whole identity and not only did I leave my whole identity by faith, but I also left behind six of my children. So... If you guys have not been tuning in um, on my story and, and kind of like this journey that I've been on since the beginning, then you let me fill you in and just tell you how much I love my kids. Like my kids are my world. You know, when I was at the bottom of the bottom, like it was my kids that was always there right with me and we thugged it out together. So when I received the word to leave everything, even my kids and not for long, a period of time, you know, but I was instructed to leave everything, even my kids. And it was such a hard decision. It's the hardest decision by far that I've had to make in my life. And so I was so completely devastated. But at the same time, I said, you know what, Father, not my will, but your will be done. I don't understand this. This don't make no sense to me. You're sending me to a whole nother country that I have no knowledge of other than, you know, my brief encounters visiting. Other than that, I have no knowledge of this place. Like, I have no knowledge of how to get a job. I have no knowledge of how the economy really works, you know? And so, and not to mention that it's just a whole change of atmosphere. So a lot of the stores that we have in the U.S. is not here, you know? And I'm, I'm a Walmart lover, okay? So I am used to being in Walmart every day. And so when all of these realities begin to set in upon me that, whoa, you're actually like taking this leap of faith and you are really moving to a whole nother country. I was just like blown away, you know, like mentally. But at the same time, I welcomed and I embraced the fact that the father was doing something new in my life. And... If it would not have been for his goodness, yeah. I cannot say that this move has been anything on my own part, um, was on my agenda. Like, I knew that I always wanted to visit the African continent, but not necessarily move. So when he put this thing within me that, you know, this sense of urgency, like, you have to go, you have to go, you have to go. I did not understand it. I still don't completely understand it. I'm not even going to sit here and try to pull a wool over nobody's eyes and act like Melody got it all figured out because she don't. I'm still trying to figure out this process. I'm trying. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what's next. I still don't completely have it figured out. But one thing that I do know is that when you put your faith and you, you put your trust and you put your hope, hope in the Father... He is faithful to come through and he is faithful to deliver upon the promises that he gives you, even when you don't understand. And as I reflect upon my move here, I think back to the story of Abraham in Genesis 22, when the father told him that he should leave 
his father's land, basically, you know, the land of his family, um, and go to a land that he did not know. But the father promised him that if you obey what I am telling you to do, that you are going to be blessed financially. You know, Abraham was blessed. He was just blessed a time, time, a time, times, 10 times a time. Like he was abundantly blessed in so many ways because he obeyed the voice of the father and he went. When the father told him to move, he moved. You know, he could have considered the fact that he's going to a land that he has never been, you know, at least, you know, in my situation, I had the opportunity of visiting here, t you know, two times before I actually was called to move here. But for Abraham, he was being called to go to a land that he had never in his life been. And he solely moved upon the promise that the father had given him. But guess what? The father reminded me that in Abraham's obedience, he was blessed. So guess what? In my obedience, I am blessed. In my obedience, blessings are flowing like a stream of steady running of water. When you're obedient to what the Father is telling you to do, despite how you feel, despite how you may look at the circumstance, despite how big it may seem, despite the fact that it may be like the biggest giant you ever encountered, you can't move from an, an emotional standpoint. You can't look at the situation and, and, and factor in life. You can't factor in reasoning because the father is so totally outside of the box of understanding. Like we, his ways are not our ways, as he said in his word. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And we can never figure out what he's doing. We can never know what he's up to. But the fact that you're obedient and the fact that you like me, you know, just move to a whole nother country. And do I still struggle with missing my kids? So much, so much I do. You know, we're always on FaceTime, we're always talking, and but my kids are just so amazing because it's like they understand, you know, the process. They understand some way, somehow, they just understand what's happening. You know, and it's like even although they would love to be with me, although I would love for them to be here in this moment, they understand that, OK, mommy got to go handle this. She got to, you know, the father has called her. She got to go do what she got to go do. And we just got to be patient. And so when I think of my kids and I think of the fact that they are just, you know, because kids are so resilient. When I think of the fact that how resilient that they are and how patient that they've been throughout this process, because I've been here in Ghana now for four months. So when I think of their patience, I look at myself. You know, it causes me to reflect upon myself to say, if my kids can be patient, if my kids can be resilient in this situation, if my kids can be understanding, if my kids can be empathetic about the circumstances that are taking place, then what more than me? Like I even myself have to come to a place of understanding, to come to a place of solitude, to come to a place of rest and just trust that the process that the father is working out is like to the, t the best of anything that I could ever do for myself. Like when he does something, y'all, y'all know that he does it, okay? He does that thing. He moves in a way that I could never move on my own. You know, I could never move on my own in a way that the father has moved in a way that he is moving and the direction that he's given me and, and he's telling me to do this and he's telling me to do that. And it's just as you are obedient to, what, to the things that he's telling you to do and as you follow what it is that he's telling you to do, you run right into your blessings. Like you don't have to do nothing child. You ain't got to do nothing, brother. You ain't got to do nothing, sister. All you have to do is stay obedient to what it is that he's telling you to do. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't try to figure things out for yourself. And when you find yourself in a situation where it seems like the situation is overtaking you, and it seems like, you know, just like the story of the Israelites when they thought they was leaving the land of Egypt to go into the promised land and found themselves in the wilderness, like, that just don't make no sense. Like, what happened? What is going on? But when you get out of your own way and you get out of your own route of understanding and you put your faith and your trust in the Father, He is sure to lead you, guide you, and direct you. And you will never go wrong. Like, 
I promise you, you will never go wrong. Like, ever. Because he has your best interest at heart. Like, he created you. He created me. He created us. He knows exactly the path that he has laid out for us. Even before he sent us here to be a part of this universe. So, you know, and I said this in my last video. Why not trust the one that created you? The one that has the blueprint to your life. Why do you think that you're supposed to just take your life into your own hand and do what you want to do? Like, it just don't make no sense. You did not create yourself. So you don't know the, the blueprint of your life. You don't know the layout and the direction that your life and the course of events that's supposed to transpire and take place in order for you to become who the Father wants you to become. Not who you want to become. Not who you think you should be. Not where you think you should live. Not what you think you should eat. Not who you think you should be married to. But just trusting in the Father and what does He think? What does He say? What is His will? Like, count me in, count me in, because I don't, I just, I've learned a long time ago, and I've spoken about this in previous videos too, to get out of my own way and to just allow the Father to just have his will in his way. And it was not easy. I ain't going to sit on here and put on a whole big old front and act like I did everything so right, everything was so perfect and great, and I fasted and all of this X, Y, and Z to, to, to get me to that point, because I'd be lying. And the devil's a lie. I don't want to be him. It was nothing but the father. Period. Like the end of the story. Nothing but him. So I want to point our direction to two scriptures that the father led me to when I was considering this whole move to Ghana. And I was just thinking about everything that's transpired. The fact that I literally left everything I knew to come here. Not on my own accord, but because he called me to come here. So we are going to go to the book of Mark. So Mark chapter 10, verse 17 through 30, and it reads, And as he was proceeding on the way, one came running and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit everlasting life? And the Messiah said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except one Elohim. You know the commands. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Respect your father and mother. And he answering said to him, Teacher, all these I have watched over from my youth. And a Messiah looking at him loved him and said to him, One you lack. Yeah, hear this? One you lack. So he done did everything he was supposed to do in life. But there was one thing that still he was lacking. He says to him, go sell all your possessions and give to the poor and you shall have treasure in the heaven and come follow me, taking up the stake. But he being sad at this word, went away grieved for he had many possessions. So in this scripture, I am reminded of once again, my move here to Ghana and how I literally gave everything up everything materialistic things the life i knew everything just to be obedient to what he has called me to do let's move on to mark 8 so mark 8 34 through 38 and it reads and calling near the crowd with his talmidium he said to them whoever desires to come after me let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me for whoever desires to save his life shall lose it. But whoever loses his life for the sake of me and the good news, he shall save it. Again, another scripture where he was like, listen, you have to literally lay down your life. Everything that I knew in America, everything that I ever was accustomed to, you know, it was all I knew. I didn't know anything outside of America. I'd never been to another country until I made the conscious decision to come to Africa and visit for the first time in October of 2021. And so the moral of the story is, is that you cannot trust your own way, that you have to literally lay down everything that it is that you feel and you so desire for your own life so that you can pick up the life that the father has for you and 
I don't know about y'all, but as for me, I know that whatever he gives is good, is everlasting. It will not be taken away unless you become disobedient, you know, and he got to check you real quick because you know he will. He's done it time and time again. And so, in short, to make a long story short, my whole move to Africa has been out of pure obedience. It's not because I desire to come. It's not because I felt this is what I need to do with my life. You know, like who would leave everything they know, change their whole environment, okay? Because it's not like I'm moving state to state. Like I literally moved to a whole nother country. You know how big your faith has to be to move to another state, let alone a whole nother country. Like your faith got to be out of this world because the average person is not going to do that. You have to literally be chosen. And I, and I don't say that to, to say that I'm so special that, you know, I just <laughs> I did the right things in life. No, but you have to literally be, ch be called and chosen and selected for something bigger than yourself. I believe that if I would have decided on my own free will to just come and let me just go move to Africa, that things would not have went the way they went and they would not continue to go the way that they're going, progressing toward a greater purpose. Not just for myself, but for my family and for, you know, the betterment of the world eventually. Because I know that he has amazing things for me to do here. You know, and it's not in this this move where it wasn't just about me. It wasn't just about my family, but it was about his people. See, the father loves his people. He will send help in the present time of trouble. Look how he sent Moses. Send him right up on in there to rescue his people. He will do it. And when he says enough is enough, and when he, he gets to the point where he says Listen, y'all done beat my people down. You done tortured them. You done did everything possible. I stood back and I allowed it for a time, but now enough is enough. And now I'm stepping in. And in that moment when he steps in, he will use a vessel. He will use a real live human being to send them into the front line to lead his people out of captivity. And so that's the word for today, y'all. The word is be obedient. And I stress this so much on this channel. Like, I feel like I sound like a broken record because I'm always talking about obedience. But it's truly not me. It's the Father speaking through me. And it's really what he's calling in this hour, in this moment, is obedience. And I feel that he's calling, he's, he's pressing upon obedience so strongly in this moment. Because our ancestors were so disobedient, you know, following other gods, worshiping idols, you know, doing what the, what the heathens was doing, following after things that they had no business in life following after. And so now he's very selective on who he's taken into this, this new change that's taking place in the atmosphere. He's very selective. And if you ain't obedient, listen, this this whole change that's happening in the atmosphere and it's changing very quick. I don't know if y'all notice. Maybe y'all so caught up in life with bills and finances and raising the kids and chasing poo poo, you know, beating down the baby mother because she mess, still messing with him and she know you've been with him. Whatever your story is. Maybe you're so caught up in life that you don't understand the change that's taking place in the atmosphere. But let me be the bearer of good news to tell you that the change is happening. Let me also be the bearer of bad news to let you know that if you don't get it together and if you don't become obedient, you will get left behind. You're going to fall just like these Gentiles is about to fall. You're going to fall just like all these disobedient people is about to fall. You are going to succumb to and be subjected to what lies ahead for them, what their ruin will be. So, and I'm not saying it's easy. Like, it's not easy being obedient. It's not, it's for sure not easy just picking up and just moving by faith. Like, it's a lot of, of, of things that has occurred over the period of my life that I feel like built me up to that point of just having that, that big faith. 
a lot of like movement, but like within states, you know, within states, within towns, just a lot of movement. And I didn't realize it then, you know, as I'm moving from this place to that place and back here and then going back there. And I didn't realize that um, he was ultimately building me up for a move as big as this. And I feel like if he wouldn't have took me through those little baby steps of moving, moving within America, that I never would have even thought on a level of coming to another country. So sometimes he'll take you through things and you don't quite understand why he's taking you through it. Don't make no sense on this green or on this green earth but you gotta go with the flow like just just learn how to let go learn how to get out of your own way and learn how to just allow him to step in and just work things out and i promise you when you do that life becomes so simple it becomes so easy listen this man you know this father this i am this great one that created all things listen y'all he done had me give away my personal items on so many occasions. And in, in the beginning, I ain't going to, you know, again, put on a show like it was so easy because it wasn't. It was kind of like, but this is mine. But I worked hard for this. But I, I wanted this bag for so long. Like, finally, I got it. And, you know, now you want me to just give it away. But he tested me so many times. Like, are you going to hold on to these materialistic things? Or are you just going to let them go and trust me? And so, you know what I did? Every time, you know, even when it was hard, even when I was just like, what do you mean this is mine? I still was like, okay. I gave in and I gave whatever it is that he was telling me to give away. So many times I emptied my complete closet. Okay, complete closet. All of my clothes gave it away. I didn't even know what I was going to wear the next day. But guess what? He blessed me tenfold with a whole brand new wardrobe. And not only that, but going through that repeatedly, because it wasn't just on one occasion he told me to give things away. It's been on many occasions, even leading up to me coming here. Before I moved um, from, a, from New York to come to Ghana, he instructed me to literally give everything away in my house, which was very expensive stuff. And, you know, it came a, a point where... I was just like battling with myself a little bit because like, I'm like, you know, I could use that money towards, you know, my move to Ghana, I'm in a whole nother country, you know, I don't know what the job situation is looking like, I don't know what the business situation is looking like, I'm gonna need all the money I, you know, I can get. And he was like, no, not so. I said to give it away, you know, and that I did. I gave all of my things away, gave it away. Without a, without a thought, I said, the father is calling me to do this. My friends didn't understand it. My family didn't understand it. They're like, girl, you're going crazy. You spent good money on them things. How are you just going to give it away? But like I said, going through the different stages of my life of him testing me and pruning me and allowing me, now that I think about it, to disassociate myself from materialism. So now because I've went through so many stages of giving things away, okay? It's like, don't even matter to me. Like materialistic things don't matter to me. Like if I have it, it's good. If you tell me to give it away, I will. Like it just, it don't even matter. Like sometimes I'm just like, why even buy anything in life? Because it's just, it does not even matter to me. And I'm so grateful that he's led me to that point of just disassociating and detaching myself from life on that level because there's so many people in this universe y'all that just clings to materialistic things like if they ain't got the new bag if they ain't got the gucci shoes on they ain't got the product glasses on they got to keep up with the joneses well life is over for them you know and that could be me because once upon a time i was a little materialistic a little bit not a whole lot but the trait of materialistic um of materialism was definitely within me and he was like mm -mm, i gotta break that thing because you cannot enter into my kingdom with that perception and that mentality you can't come into my kingdom with the with the mindset of, of materialism that can't come with where i'm sending you so you have to let that thing go so listen y'all the father done done it y'all he done done it he done done it he done done it and Today was just like the most amazing day. 
I completed my three day giraffe fast. No food, no water. And I feel great. I feel great. But you know what? That's going to be a testimony for another video. So I don't even want to speak about. Um, I don't want to speak about the, the whole fast situation because that's going to be a video that I'm going to be putting out very soon. But he is leading me to talk about my journey of what it was like during that fast and also the blessings that come forward from fasting. So until next video, I will see y'all soon. And listen, y'all, make sure y'all be obedient to this, to this father, this loving, gracious father that loves us so much. Just be obedient. Be obedient, whatever it is. I don't care if he's telling you to take your left shoe and put it in a garbage and it don't make sense because now you only going to have one shoe left. Do what that man telling you to do. Until next video, I'll see y'all soon.